Morning everyone, it's actually three o'clock in the morning, three minutes past three in the morning. And I want to get this vlog done, so all I've got to do is, when I get up in the morning, is edit it and post it. Or upload it, I should say. So, it's mostly going to be another computer talk video, because I've got that silver HP laptop to go. That works, and I'll show you that in a second. I've got a Megablox model here. Look at this, I found that the other day. I found that Saturday, actually, for £3 in um, the Sue Ryder charity shop that my mum works in. I know it's Megablox and not Lego, but I I personally like Megablox. Not as much as actual Lego. He loves sitting in the corner of that table. <laughs> Seriously, that's what he does sometimes. He'll just sit there like that and just, you know, mind his own business sort of thing. Anyway. Yeah, I don't mind Mega Box. Lego will always be my number one, but... Yeah, as an alternative, it's not a bad... Um, not a bad set of stuff. Anyway. There's the HP laptop that I got. I'm pretty certain I've already mentioned this. I got it about a week ago from a friend who got hold of it just for the one terabyte hard drive that was in it. Um, because the status was unknown. He didn't know if it actually worked or not. And we didn't have a power supply to power it up. Because it needs one of these with the um, really thin sort of needle point, needle pin thing down the middle of it. Uh... So I thought as this looked in fairly good condition and I couldn't see any obvious signs that would suggest it didn't work, I gambled. And I bought the power supply for £13.99 on eBay. Free shipping. Can't beat free shipping. Mind you, for £13.99, I probably paid tenner for that and the postage was hidden in the price. That's what some sellers do. But because you see the free shipping, you think, ooh, that's good, free shipping. <laughs> anyway, and as you can see, it works. And uh, it's pretty much a mini version of my uh, desktop over there. That's what my PS3 for. Um, the desktop has got a 3 gigahertz dual-core AMD A4 APU in it. So it's got um, built-in Radeon graphics. With 12 gigabytes DDR3 RAM. This one has actually got an AMD A8. 6410 is the model number of it. Um, 2 gigahertz quad core APU. I don't know if that processor is, at, you know, performance wise, any better than the 3 gigahertz dual core on the other machine, but. It's also got AMD Radeon graphics on it. It's got Beats Audio. Um, everything works really well, apart from the keyboard. That's the only fault. Basically, the numpad, arrow keys, shift key, and a key don't work. As far as I can tell, pretty much everything else works on the keyboard. Um, so I'm guessing someone has spilt some sort of drink or something on here and killed that part of the keyboard and uh, it's I know it's out of warranty because I've been into the BIOS and it actually says born 16th of July 2016 so well over a year old now a year and four five months old probably nearly five months a year and five months old Nearly a year and a half old, we'll say. So, out of warranty, so I bet someone just discarded it and went out and bought another one. Instead of paying someone to fix it. I mean, I know how to replace that keyboard. It is really simple. It is three ribbon cables. And that's all there is. Three ribbon cables to disconnect. That top bit, the whole thing just pops straight out. just clips in. So... What I've got to do is find a replacement, or source a replacement, and uh, it it would have literally cost me the price of whatever the key, you know, of the keyboard and the power supply. 
Whereas if you pay a computer shop to do it, it would cost, well, by the time you've done, you might as well go and buy another laptop. That's why people discard them a lot of the time. Well, me being me, I would have just used a USB keyboard. I used to have a, um, a fold-up one. You know, I could roll it up. <laughs> Dreadful to type on, though, but that would have been another option. So uh, I've got a laptop here with a busted keyboard, and then another laptop here. My Acer with a busted mousepad, because that don't work at all. There's no life in that whatsoever. Never has been um, since I had it. I think I might have done something with the cable when I had it apart and I just never bothered fixing it. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that beast. It's got a much larger screen. That is the problem with the Acer, it's got quite a small screen. I, might, I may end up giving the Acer to Mum once I've got the um, HP sorted properly. Anyway, moving on. I've got this big orange doodah here. What is it? It's what they call a cone topper. Um, they are still made. Not by the same company. Well, the company that made this merged with another company to make one big company, basically. This is made by a company called Swintex which uh, back in the day they made a lot of traffic cones and pedestrian barriers and whatnot. Um, and so did a company called Melba. And my other cone topper I've got is a Melba. So I've got one from each company back then. But they, I think it was somewhere in the 2000s, they, um, I think it was about the mid 2000s, they merged to make one big company. So they're now Melba Swintex. But as this one's got Swintex Limited on it, I know that one's relatively old, but basically it just sits on top of your traffic cone and your red and white barrier planks just go into that slot. And your lamp, if you choose, can be bolted to the top. So it just converts your traffic cones into a pedestrian barrier system. That's all it does. <clears throat> Quite popular. In the 90s. I remember seeing them a lot in the 90s. As well as the um, Defiance Barrier System, which no one would probably know what the heck that is. I know, and I want the posts for it, but they're like trying to find a needle in a freaking haystack. And I need some called a Watchman. I need some posts called the Watchman Barrier. Because I've got the planks and I've got one post. Can't do a lot with that. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. Uh, bedroom. More excitement in the bedroom. Here we go. Right. <laughs> uh, I got that one out of the closet outside the front door. That's my Advent 3 111. Um, I'll pull it forwards a little bit. There we go. It's almost exactly as it was when it came out of the factory. There's the sticker on the top. 2.5 GHz Intel Pentium 4 processor, 512 megabytes DDR RAM, which I've actually um, installed on it. I had a gigabyte originally, but I thought this is so close to being a factory original machine, I'll just put the 512 in it. Uh, the 32 times CDRW and a 16 times DVD ROM. Well, it's got the CDRW and a DVD ROM, but without taking them out, I don't know the speed, but I'm going to presume they are the originals, or at least the same speed. 40 gigabyte hard drive. Unfortunately, I've got a 20 gig in there, but I'm not too fussed about that. I have got a 40 gig, but that means reinstalling it. Um, XP on this one and the other machine where the 40 gig is and then I've got the hassle of trying to find drivers and not easy on these old OEM machines it really isn't so I'm just going to leave it as it is they both work uh, and 
a GeForce 4 MX420 64 megabyte DDR slash TV out video card, which is also still present on that machine. Um, I got that probably um, two years ago ish with um, one of these big job lots of computers I've bought over the last couple of years. Um, I just got it working, I thought why not, you know. I actually like the colour of the case. I know it's only an OEM, you know, factory built machine, but I like it. Uh, then I've got my XP gaming rig. Or the more period correct um, XP gaming rig, because the one I've got under there has got all DDR2 stuff, you know, all the newer better stuff. This one's got the DDR source um, stuff on what would have been basically around in XP's heyday. Um, and I was asked tonight by a friend of mine, Mark Hyder, is there any point to it? Not really. Um, unless you've got a shit ton of uh, old PC games like I have that would run really well, you know, on an XP machine like that with 32-bit operating system, which a lot of XP machines were. There's very, very few that were 64-bit, because 32-bit was still extremely popular. Um, so that's pretty much why I built it. Well, one of the reasons. One, because I could. I got all the parts, you know, and it gave me something to do. And two, because I've got all those games which are now under here. And I'll get into that in a minute while I've got that here. But anyway, all my games are hiding under there. And all of those are pretty much from, you know, either Windows XP's heyday or before, older. So, um, that's the reason I built that computer, so I've got something I can play them on. Right, the next one on the list, this Packard Bell. I got that in the last lot of computers I bought. The only problem it had, even though it worked and turned on fine, whoever took the hard drive out took the hard drive bay with it. <laughs> they just took the whole bay out. Annoying, but I don't blame them because it's a lot easier, you know. They probably just assumed it was going to get, you know, recycled at the recycle centre or something. Or any electrical bin, you know, get disposed of, but uh, I got it working, and the way I did it, I had one of those little uh, um, IDE flash modules, a 4 gigabyte one. I just plugged that into the IDE socket, plugged the Molex power in. <coughs> it already had Windows XP on it, because oddly enough, that module came with the same job lot of computer stuff that computer came with. So I'll just put it in there and I actually managed to find the drivers for it as well, the motherboard drivers, so. But I can't for the advent. That advent seems to be quite obscure. So. But it's working, it's another OEM in the collection. It's all it really is, just a collection of random computers. If I like the case, it gets kept. Anyway. We're going to move on to this one before I get onto the bike because I traded, I can't remember what I traded my bike for. I really can't. Um, actually, I think I traded this bike. I did. I didn't trade my PS3 at all, did I? I traded the. Um, I traded my old Claude Butler here for the PC I've got in the lounge. What did I trade the PS3 for then? I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, my friend also come up with this. He got it for free. We did a bit of trading as we do, so I've now got it. It's on Windows XP. Um, I've. It wasn't working when he got it, but the power supply was dead. and I'm not surprised because we opened it up and it was just full of shit. It probably overheated because of all the fluff and muck and grime that was in it and it just died basically it died a horrible death 
But anyway, put it here, slapped a power supply in it, tidied up a few cables and whatnot on the inside, and it works. <laughs> It's got 768 megabytes of RAM, an AMD Athlon 2000 Plus processor. Uh, let me just move my spotlights out of the way. They're sort of turned into my work lights, those things. On the front we have a compact disc rewriter drive. Uh, 5232. I don't know why it's got 52 on there twice. We've got this micro speaker in here that likes to get stuck. And you rotate it that actually works as well and that's actually made me want to get some more of those totally forgot they even existed until this machine floppy disk drive i'm gonna go ahead and turn it on i think i might have the hard drive led in the wrong place because it just stays on like that all the time but i don't care it's a bit loud as well isn't it crank it down a bit Oh, and with this one, I'm going to show you how not to set your password. Because this is password protected. So I'm going to have, I'm going to go through this and just wipe. Well, I don't want to wipe Windows XP because I can't find the drivers for that motherboard. But what I'm going to do is just wipe all the personal stuff that's on here off. Basically, put it back to factory settings. <coughs> I think just because I can, I'll put a case fan in the back. Okay, so this is what you don't do when you want to set a password. Right. Jude, right? I presume that's the name of the person that owned this. Now, obviously, me and my friend were curious and we were just playing around. We were just typing in, you know, the obvious. We tried like 000 and 1234 etc and even the word password and then I just decided to type the username like that There we go There's a background picture of what I presume is well, it could be their grandson, their son, nephew, I'm not sure. But, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna plug in the Ethernet. There we go. I'll cover him up. Load up. Take that sweet time, but it's got a 40 gig hard drive in. <clears throat> which initially I was going to take out of this one and put in the advent so that would then be completely original. Well, at least original specs. <clears throat> But it's just too complicated because I can't find the drivers for either machine, so I'm just going to leave them as they are. But I actually really like this case. I love that red bezel around the front. Don't ask me why, I just like it. And uh, in fact, I did very often. I've got a similar one under there that I've got Windows Millennium on. Right, moving on. <clears throat> I got this back. Fuck. I was going to piss my neighbours off. Because uh, my friend was pretty desperate to get a decent computer working so he could play his Facebook games like I do and whatnot. And the one we built in the first place, I built with the well, the motherboard is in there. It came out my Dell Inspire on 531. I decided to scrap that in the end. Which worked great for him, but it just didn't quite have enough oomph. Even though it had 2 gigabytes of RAM and uh, 
uh, what was it? The dual core AMD processor, it just it, literally, it was just lacking a little bit. <clears throat> so, uh, after I'd got this computer here and whatnot, he messaged me on Facebook and said, Would you swap the motherboard that was in the computer there, which as you can see is no longer there? I do still have that case though. For the Claude Butler. And he's like, I'll miss the Claude Butler, but at the moment I want the computer more. <laughs> so, as you can see, I've now ended up with that. But lost the motherboard out of that, which isn't no biggie. I haven't really used that yet. So I can soon find another board to chuck in there, no doubt. <clears throat> or even use one of my laptops, because they've both got HDMI out. So, you know, I could actually sit the laptop on there and just run an HDMI cable up to there. So yeah, I've got my baby back now. We'll sort that front brake out on because it's shit. So I need to move that so I can actually get in a bloody bed. Oh, I got this off of him as well. Look at that. It's a fan controller. Don't really see the point in these myself apart from the novelty aspect of it you know you can control your speeds of foot up to four fans and you know all of these light up blue so there's that novelty thing about it you know to me it's just a little novelty box you know <clears throat> something to fiddle with on your computer sort of thing so I don't, I don't actually know if I'll put that on any of the computers I might do not on that one because it lights up blue <clears throat> if it lit up red I probably would uh, I can't remember but there's a few other knickknacks as well take all this off here <clears throat> so I'm getting into the, into the I can't remember what that's from That's 512 megabytes of DDR2. I've got a gig and a half's worth there. I did get the two one gigabyte sticks back that I also put in his computer the first time. I really can't remember what I traded the PS3 for. Or was it the PS3 for the... Now, was the PS3 for the computer through there? So what the hell did I trade for this? I can't remember. Although I have got new pedals on it. <laughs> That's one bonus. <clears throat> Am I letting it go again? Nope. No, 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 no. I think he's loosened the front brake off on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because you screwed my adjuster in. I don't know, I'll sort that out and get some, actually I'll buy some decent lights for this one. <clears throat> oh. I've got a bit of wind tonight. Or Nemo. <laughs> the only reason it's up here is because I've got nowhere in the shed to put it at the minute. No room. <clears throat> well, he did promise me he'd look after it and it has been looked after. Everything's still at work. As far as I know. <clears throat> oh dear, excuse me. Right. <clears throat> Come 
Oh, it's down here. Yeah, this is the motherboard. I think I'll sling this on eBay. Well, it does work. There's no I.O. plate, but someone might be able to slap it into their own rig or might need a replacement. I don't know. I'll try it on eBay if it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm not going to include the processor or anything with this one. So I'll keep that as a spare for the other one. That's the one gigabyte sticks. Samsung sticks. 5300s. Those can go with my other Dell. So I'm keeping that one. My silver one. Oh, he's put this on there. I can't remember where he got it from or what he got it off of, but he put that on there himself. It's actually quite nice. Yeah, really, I think it could have... Well, what it needed... It needed a video card. But this won't recognise any video card we plug into this slot, and I don't know why. It's just not having it. So... Um, I could, it could have done with uh, an extra two gigs of RAM in here as well, so, you know, the four gigs. That's what it could have done with, but I just didn't have that RAM, and, uh, well, I could have put an extra gig in, so it had three gigs, which would have been a probably a, a great help, but I think the letdown was the graphics, because obviously uh, the onboard isn't really good enough for games. You know, it's good enough to turn it on and use websites. That's all onboard graphics is usually good for. But, uh, like I said, it won't. It's supposed to cancel out the onboard video. But this was still working, even though there was a card plugged in there. So I'm guessing there's an issue. With the slot itself, I might be able to play around and get it to work. If I can get it to work... I may not skip the um, case because <clears throat> that's actually sitting outside my front door ready to be skipped. Let's get this shut down now, shall we? Get the cola in the fridge. Oh, it's got the update, it's good. <clears> hey. <throat> See what these comments. I am off to bed, so thanks a lot for watching, and uh, as always, I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.